Okay, so we're going to do the Belle Vue Romper today by Little Lizard King. You're going to need the back cut on a fold, the front cut on a fold. You'll need the front bodice piece, one main, one lining, both cut on a fold. You'll need the back bodice piece here, one lining, one main, cut on a fold. You'll need two flutters here, cut on a fold, and mirrored images. And then here's the cut chart measurements that I just go ahead and write on my pattern pieces. And you'll need the tie straps, the loops, the butt ruffles, the snap placket, back elastic, leg elastic, and bias tape measurements. This is a bias tape I use. It's from Hobby Lobby. It is the half inch single fold bias tape. And then here are the snaps that I use from camsnap.com. I'll link them below. All right, here are the pieces cut out the back and um, bias tape, three quarter inch back elastic, quarter inch leg elastic, um, the butt ruffles here. Then you also need the front bodice, front or main and lining, back bodice, main and lining, two snap plackets, two things for the loops, two ruffles, and then also the two straps here. All right, so let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna do a rolled hem on the curved edge of my uh, rough flutter piece here and on both edges, the long edges of the butt ruffles here. So I'm gonna show you how to do the narrowed hem. These are the settings here. If you wanna take a screenshot of this, um, this is what I used. You are gonna need to remove your left needle and your stitch finger. And so I'm doing this now here. Um, I also lost my little tool. So I just use this little bit that fits into the screwdriver to turn and take my needle out. So you take your left needle out and just make sure you put that right needle back in. I take them both out at the same time. It works easier for me. All right, next we're gonna take the stitch finger out and this is what it looks like here. That little spot with that yellow triangle in there. You're going to push the little lever down. I have a whole bunch of yuckiness in my machine here. But you're gonna push this little lever down. Hopefully I'll get better view here. This lever right here, you push it and it pops out like that. <laughs> um, and then actually you have a spot in your um, door here that you can actually put the stitch finger so you don't lose it. That's pretty nifty. So I'm just gonna pop this in here. All right, and then we're going to thread this machine like normal. You just obviously won't thread the left needle because it doesn't, it's not in there right now. Okay, so I've got the right needle set at four. Uh, the, the green is five and the blue is seven. That's the upper and lower loopers. And then here's the side settings here I've got. My differential is at seven or 0.7. And then I've got this one at the R and this one at the R. All right, so I'm doing a scrap piece of fabric here just to make sure that I like the settings. Always do scrap before you start sewing your garment just to make sure that you got it perfect. You don't wanna mess your garment up. I got this perfect the way I wanted it. And so I'm just gonna finish the ruffle edges here. All right, you're gonna finish the flutter edge, the, the curved edge of the flutter, and you're gonna finish both edges of the butt ruffles, um, the long edges. So before I move any further, what I'm gonna do is do a, just a serge seam on the straight edge of my flutter pieces here. This is what I'm gonna use to gather these later. So you're gonna do this with both pieces here. I'm gonna just do it with one for now, just on the camera. All right, so now I've got my strap piece here, and this is the short edge and I'm going to fold it over half an inch and then press it. All right, next we're gonna fold it um, in the middle. <laughs> so fold it like this with the raw edges touching each other and then you're going to press it you're just going to press it and yeah pay no attention to my ironing board I, the stuff gets stuck to it and it looks gross but i promise it's not it's just got stuff on it <laughs> and it just gets stuck on it from all the starch spray that i spray so you're just going to memory press this down the middle and then you're going to again measure and you're going to fold once i can figure this doohickey out like i lost my marbles for a second all right you're gonna fold this over half an inch and then press on either side 
okay? And I'm not going to do the whole thing just for video purposes because I don't want this to be a very long video. Um, if you have an attention span like me, it's kind of hard to watch the entire thing, but I'm trying to give you all the details. So bear with me as we go through this. So you're pretty much just, like I said, folding half an inch on either side. Um, this just hides that raw edge when you fold this strap together. It makes it look really nice. And um, I'm going to try to speed up a lot of this video so that it's not super fast. I'm not a super human person. <laughs> um, and this did actually take me quite some time too because woven is not my strong suit. So don't feel bad. <laughs> all right. And so once you get those folded on both sides all the way down the strap, you're going to fold like this. And then that's your strap here. And you'll finish the end there since we folded that quarter or half inch up at the top as well. All right, so here's the straps all pressed and whatnot. Um, I did both of them. And I'm putting these raw edge down. And we're going to... These marks are in the chart. You need to mark half an inch from the raw edge. And then depending on the size that you choose, I chose four, that's the size I'm using, um, is how many inches need to be between the ruffles here. So now we're going to gather the ruffle or the flutter, I guess I should say. And so mine was 17 inches and this is how I gather these. You guys know I despise gathering, but you pop one of these straight stitches out. So one of your needle threads, pop it out and then you'll just pull it. Be gentle because it will break and just pull your needle thread and until you get the desired gathering. I'm going to do this off camera because it takes an ungodly amount of time, but you, you do the gathers and then you press gathering and pressing and pressing and pressing some more is your best friend when you do this so this is what it looks like once you've got them gathered to the 17 inch um width that you need to fit into the straps and i've pressed them down so they'll be easier to sew over now i'm just going to pin them on and then we're going to base stitch which is just a really lengthened straight stitch here i'm just going over it just to make sure that they don't shift and move and i can remove these pins All right, so this is what they look like, and then you'll fold your strap over like this and move them over so we can work on the your loops. So basically, you fold them in half, open them, and then fold each half to the half, and then fold them in half again like this, and then you'll sew the edge down, and then you'll press them like this. All right, so now we're going to grab the front bodice and your main piece here. You are going to... Grab your pattern piece because on your pattern piece there are these little notches on the top and the bottom that um, denote where the strap is actually going to line up. So I like to grab a, just a pencil. Um, if you have like a water soluble marker that works too. Mine's like blown up so I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to use a pencil. And I'm going to use my ruler here and just make straight lines to make sure that my straps look perfect. So now I'm putting these right sides together here and then you are going to sew with a sewing machine this outer edge here with a half inch seam allowance and then here's the back bodice here and again this back uh, pattern piece has a notch on it as well that is going to show you where your belt loops are going to go. Or your buttons, depending on which, which one you're doing. Your buttonholes, I guess. But we're doing loops, so I'm putting my loops here and here, just pinning them in place. Be careful where you put your pin because you are going to sew over this. So you're going to put this right sides together as well. And then that top edge, you're going to sew half inch seam allowance across the edge here. So this is what they look like done. I, I didn't do that on camera. Um, but it's fairly simple. I did use my sewing machine to do that. And now we're just going to cut the corners off here. Be careful not to cut into that seam allowance. And then I'm using my pinking shears here just to make sure that this doesn't fray that much. Um, wovens are not my friend. <laughs> so this was um, a little bit more difficult than my typical tutorial just because I'm not used to working with woven. But hey, I say an advanced beginner can get this done easy. 
It just might take a while. <laughs> but hey, no pain, no gain, right? And plus, you feel super accomplished when you're done. All right, so you're going to open this up. And if you need to press it, um, that's what I did. Opened it up and then just pressed it, popped my corners out. That's what it looks like pressed. Nice and neat. Okay, so you're going to flip open your front bodice here like this to where it lays flat, where your lining and your main lay flat like this, right side up. And then you're going to do the same thing with your back bodice here and make sure that your main piece and lining piece are, you know, going the way they're supposed to go. All right. And then also you are going to, of course, sew the side seams here, half inch seam allowance. So this is what it looks like when I'm done. I used the pinking shears and I pressed open the seams here, as you can see. And so now I'm just going to fold it over gently on itself and then use a clip to secure it so it doesn't move right now. All right, and so I'm going to flip this out, right side out. And now we are going to use the back elastic. We're going to have to make a casing for the back elastic. So an inch from the top is where you're going to do this elastic. And so you're just going to go to the side seams here. You're just going to create this casing in the back bodice. And so I'm just marking up here just to make sure I get it straight across. And then I'm just going to make a straight line across so that I can sew over it still using my pencil here. And then I'm going to sew a straight stitch side seam to side seam on this straight line here. And then this is what it looked like on there. It was kind of fast, sorry. Um, and then you're going to put a safety pin on your elastic and then just push it through. And this is the hole that you're going to be sticking it in here through the front bodice. You're going to stick it into the back bodice here. And then you're just going to slink it through. Make sure you pay attention that, so you don't pull it all the way through. So when you get it kind of to the edge here, you're going to keep it about a half or quarter inch off the edge here. And then I like to pin mine. All right, and then keep working your way through and then once you get to the other side pull it a little bit and make sure that a quarter inch is sticking out on the side All right, and then you're going to do what's called stitch in the ditch which is so straight down on that side seam there so I'm just doing normal straight stitch. This is what it looks like. Okay, now comes the fun part. We're going to add the straps to this cute thing. So that's what that looks like once you stitch in the ditch. That's just so fun to say. <laughs> All right, so I'm flipping this out. This is what the back elastic looks like. Stretchy. And other than the straps, the bodice is complete. So we're going to do the final step on the bodice here, which is just adding these beautiful ruffled fluttery goodness straps that probably took you forever to make. But hey, it's worth it. <laughs> right it's worth it right okay <laughs> all right so now we get to line these straps up where we drew that line okay and so i'm just going to pin these down And then we're going to top stitch them down on the inside here and then all the way down and closing the end. So this is what it looks like. I'm starting on that raw edge there. And I'm just going to sew to the 
bodice here, the ending of the bodice. You can actually go all the way down if you want to. I'm just choosing to go right here and stop and just back stitch, of course. And then you're going to do the entire long edge here and just make sure that your, you know, strap lines up with the front and the back. Otherwise, it'll it'll not catch the back. So just make sure you pay attention to that. Slow and steady are your friends during this step here, just to make sure that you are paying attention and keeping everything in line. And this is what the glorious bodice looks like, yay. All right, now time for the bottom. So for the butt ruffles, the beloved butt ruffles, the pattern piece has the um, lines, the notches, where you're going to draw your lines, again with the pencil. So I'm just going to kind of make a snip here on all three marks. And then use my ruler to make the three lines that the butt ruffles are going to go on. I don't know how many times I can say butt ruffles in this video. <laughs> All right, so here's my butt ruffles again. <laughs> and um, I finished both edges here. And I'm gonna go with the hemmed edge here. You could rolled, rolled hem it both edges. I just chose to hem one edge. All right, and you don't have to worry about the sides because they are gonna get stuck in the side seam there. So don't worry about the sides. I finished my sides before I realized that they were gonna get stuck in the seams. Um, so we're going to sew two rows of lengthened straight stitches on this top part here, whatever you want your top edge to be. And we're going to sew one edge at a half inch seam allowance and one at a quarter inch seam allowance. On the same edge, we're just going to do a half inch seam and a quarter inch seam, very lengthened. Mine goes up to 4.8 um, in the length of my stitch. And I'm just using a plain straight stitch going straight down. Don't backstitch on this because you do want it to be able to move. All right, once you get that done, you are going to grab either the front threads or the back threads, whichever one you want to choose. I'm going to choose the two front threads here or or the back threads <laughs> and um, whichever you want to do. And then you are going to hold those steady and, you know, pull your fabric along and it will start bunching up. All right, and you're just going to try to make your gathers match the length of the back um the back piece here where you drew the lines okay so this is what it looks like after the ungodly amount of time i spent gathering this butt ruffle <laughs> all right and so you're gonna of course you're gonna do a straight stitch down the middle of those two stitches that we did the gathering stitches so right in the middle just look at what you did follow it and so, so not lengthened do a regular straight stitch down the middle of those two stitches we did and we're going to remove the gathered 
threads the gathering threads whatever you guys know what I'm talking about and here I am trying to remove my threads here which also took an ungodly amount of time but you know what whatever <laughs> So I'm just going to uh, fast forward to Super this Super quick tip. Find the middle of the back and the middle of the butt ruffle. Pin them and then gather to the middle and then, you know, even them out. It's the easiest way to do it. It's what I found, especially if you're using this gather method. So that's what they look like. And then there's a third one. Super fast. Yeah, it, it you know, y'all know this took me forever. Um, but super accomplished. <laughs> First time I've done butt ruffles. I'm not afraid to admit it. <laughs> They take forever, but I wanted to show you guys how to do it because I know we have some butt ruffle lovers. All right, so now we're gonna put the front piece of the bomb on the the bomb the bottom <laughs> down on the back piece, right sides together, and you're gonna sew up these side seams here, and you're gonna catch those butt ruffles in the side seam so that they are finished on the edge there. All right, half inch seam allowance, of course. And I went ahead and s did the straight stitch and then I surged the edge just to finish off the side seams. All right, now we're gonna add the bias tape to the legs, but I'm gonna go ahead and flip this right side out just so I can show you guys what it looks like. Butt ruffles. <laughs> And see it caught on the side there. All right, bias tape, yay! <laughs> We're almost done. <laughs> All right, so you you turn the garment right side out, of course, and you're going to basically pin this bias tape raw edge to raw edge. So you're gonna unfold one half of this like this, and then just sew. You're gonna pin first, obviously. You're not gonna sew first, but you're going to put the bias tape on the edge here, raw edge to raw edge. I do like to put mine not exactly on the raw edge just because I'm afraid that sometimes it might pull being a woven fabric. Um, so I like to give myself a tiny little extra on the garment. So I'm putting the bias tape a little bit above the raw edge. Um, so now I'm just pinning it. And now we're gonna do a straight stitch on that folded crease right there. You're gonna sew a straight stitch down that folded crease. Be really careful to make sure you follow that crease because this is how we're going to create the casing for the leg elastic. All right, so once you're done with that, now we have to fold this down. So that's what it looks like when you sew it on, on there. And now we're gonna flip it up like this and then fold it down like this. So now the entire bias tape is now on the wrong side of the garment. You won't be able to see it at all on the outside. All you will see is the next stitch that we're gonna do to top stitch this down on the inside. And so you can go ahead and pin this if you want to. Um, I typically don't because it's actually really easy just to sew it. Um, but whatever you need to do to get this done, if you need a pin, if you need a clip. I don't know if you noticed, but I did get some clips. <laughs> if you're an avid watcher of me, I've used pins forever, but I finally got clips and I actually like them. And so once you get it all pinned, what you're going to do is you're going to sew 
an eighth inch seam allowance on the outer edge of this now to top stitch it down. So this bottom edge here, you're going to do an eighth inch seam allowance, pretty much as close as the edge you can as you can get without you know missing it. <laughs> and you're going to just top stitch that down all the way down, and it creates this casing for the elastic to go in. This is what it looks like. And then we're gonna cut these little pieces off on the ends just to make them even. And then you're gonna need a safety pin and your leg elastic. And just like we did the back elastic, you're just gonna thread it through this casing here. So you'll find the little open hole at the end and thread it through. And again, just be careful not to pull it all the way through. Make sure you're watching the end here because then you just did all that work for nothing. <laughs> and then I like to pin my ends. Um, I like to keep the end flat too. I find it's easier when I do the snap pocket here in a few. Um, I just find it's easier when the, the end is flat. So I pin up a little bit more. All right, and so you, when you're done, you'll pull it through the other edge here, pull it out a little bit. And I am putting about a quarter inch of the elastic sticking out. So that's the leg elastic. You repeat with the other leg and this is what it looks like when it's finished. And I just have them pinned. You can sew them down. I don't. I just wait till the snap placket is done. So there's snap placket. Two pieces here. You're going to fold one raw edge down half an inch and press it. Again, don't come for me for my iron mat here. <laughs> I don't. I really don't know. Like it just stuff gets stuck to it, and you can't wipe it off no matter what. <laughs> I use a lot of starch spray when I'm using wovens, and it just sticks to it. All right, so you're gonna put this raw edge, the not folded edge, the raw edge, right sides together on your snap placket here. Try to match it up in the middle as best as you can because you want side the stuff hanging off each side. And you're gonna use a half inch seam allowance with this pattern. All right, now you're gonna flip this up and press it. Press the seam up. And then I pressed it up and then back over on itself. Um, so that's where I got that middle crease there. But this is what you're going to do. You're going to fold it back like this. You don't have to press it. I just find it looks nicer and easier. So you're going to fold it back on itself. And then you're going to sew straight down on either side. And it's important that you sew straight and butt it up against the edge of the romper here. So like this. And like this, make sure you're back stitching. That's what it looks like. And we're going to cut all the little pieces off. And we're going to cut off the seam allowance. We're going to clean that up a little bit. Be careful not to cut into your seam. And then you flip this out and pop your corners out. And you're going to top stitch this down and that's your snap placket. So I'm just pop this one corner out here. And I'm going to top stitch this down. All right, this is what it looks like top stitched. And I do top stitch from the bottom because it catches the top. Um, I've, I've sometimes noticed if you top stitch from the top and it won't catch the bottom. So now we're going to do snaps. I'm doing this super fast. I find the middle. I find the middle. I'm using my cam snaps here. And I just use this little clip to determine where my snap should go. The distance. Just because I didn't want to grab my ruler. Alright. So you'll need six of the prong ones. You'll need three of the male parts and three of the female parts. The male part I like to put on the front. And the female part I like to put on the back. 
and this is me just pressing them in here and I will link the tool that I used. Um, I used a, a whole bunch of tools before I found the perfect one and this this cam snap tool is is just amazing. So you absolutely need it especially if you do a lot of woven or you do a lot of garments with snaps. This is a godsend. <laughs> All right, so now we get to gather. And of course, you know that I'm gonna gather this waste with my favorite method, and that is with elastic. So I have measured the bodice here, just laying flat, unstretched, and I have overlapped my elastic and quartered it up. And then I made a fr front piece here, snip and a back snip here for the front and the back just so I can make sure I have my quarter pieces here. There's a snip and there's a snip. <laughs> and of course, just like I do everything else, I'm going to match up my four, four, four points. And because this romper has a seam allowance, a half inch seam allowance, I am going to drop my elastic down a little bit more than I normally would. So I'm going to keep it a half an inch above because I'm when I'm cutting, when I'm adding the bodice to the bottoms, I want to cut off half an inch. So now I'm going to gather with my sewing machine. And pretty much I'm using a lengthened straight stitch as long as it'll go. And I just pull, I start the stitch so that when I pull it, it doesn't yank out. <laughs> and then I'm gonna grab the next point and just pull it to lay the elastic flat onto the fabric. And if you are using an elastic that is not stretchy enough, this may not work for you. So you may need to find really good knit elastic. I'm just using quarter inch knit elastic. And I did pre-stretch it before I did this. And so I'm trying to maintain that half inch above the elastic because that's what I'm going to cut off when I'm attaching the bodice to the bottoms. Slow and steady here just make sure you're sewing on that elastic because if you miss the elastic you're going to miss some gathers. Alright, this is what it looks like all gathered up. Nice. <laughs> Much less time than gathering it the old fashioned way for me. Um, some people can gather on their serger um, with a like a ruffle foot. Um, I haven't quite figured that out yet, so this is what works for me. I'm going to find the middle back here of the bodice and the front middle. And I'm going to match up these points. So I'm going to put the bodice inside the bottoms and I'm making sure the right sides together and I'm just matching up my points here sorry you couldn't see all of that I didn't realize it wasn't in the camera frame so I'm matching up my side seams and I'm going to attach this on the serger so let's go to the serger and I also realized that you can't see any of this um, as far as exactly what I'm doing but I just put this in and cut off up to the elastic. So I'm not cutting the elastic. I'm cutting a half inch of the fabric off pretty much is what I'm doing. Um, and I did tighten my needles because it's a woven fabric. <laughs> That's pretty much all I did. And so I'm just going around and making sure I maintain that half inch and I'm not cutting my elastic. I'm actually, the seam should be on the elastic. All right, there's my daughter. <laughs> You're gonna tuck that tail there. And then this is what the inside's gonna look like now. And you can flip that elastic up and top stitch it down. And so you're gonna top stitch it. And I'm gonna try to show you where to top stitch it. 
And you're going to top stitch it on the bodice and the back bodice here all the way around. Okay, so here I am top stitching. And then when you get to the back, just as you did when you attached it, you're going to stretch it to lay it flat as you're top stitching. So stretch that back elastic. So that it's flat. All right, and then I'm gonna show you how to put the straps in the loops here and just tie a cute little bow. Um, don't, don't come for me for my bow. <laughs> And you did it! Look at this beautiful romper. I hope yours looks like mine. <laughs> if not, watch it a few more times. I hope you guys love this video. I'll see you next week. Bye!